What do you get when you remove the dial from Logitech's craft model? You get MX keys. Hi guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. After checking out Logitech's brand new MX Master 3 mouse aimed toward productivity users, if you missed that review, please be sure to check it out. I will put the link in the right top corner of this video. Today I will be checking out its so to speak natural companion, the MX Keys wireless keyboard. Look guys, it has no wires. I say natural because it was released together with it and they actually sell them on their website as a combo solution if you want to buy them like that. And as of now, as I can see, they've stopped offering a free palm rest within that bundle, probably because everything is out of stock as I'm doing this video, so it reverted back to a full price, but that could change again. As you've probably noticed, this model looks very much like their ongoing craft model and if you're interested in checking it out, I'll put a link to my review of it in the right top corner of this video. And that's what this model basically is, a spin-off version of it, coming in without that big dial which was placed in the left top corner. Because it's gone now, they've decided to thin down that top area which looks like a, some kind of keyboard's added bar module, and they did that by etching the keyboard's main plate into it from the top side, instead of just leaning onto it on the sidewall, like they did with its more expensive brother. From the bottom we have that same surface area of it, looking like a long, rounded French baguette bread with a couple of rubber feet, which are also placed on the bottom edge of the keyboard. Besides serving as a standoff and providing a subtle angle for the keyboard, Logitech also put the batteries into this module, presumably the same 1500mAh ones, while we also have battery LED indicator in the right top corner, and just behind it there's an on and off switch and a USB Type-C port for charging it up, unfortunately without a quick charge option as seen on the new MX Master 3. The keyboard is still very sturdy and well built, has a hefty feel to it on account of its just above 800 grams of weight, despite of that it looks to be pretty skinny. They combine high quality plastics, probably with metal underbody construction, and although I was almost tricked to think that this top cover is actually metal, based on its look and finish, it actually isn't, as well as that upper bar module, which is now also plastic and not metal as in the case of the craft model. I guess they had to cut corners somewhere in order to justify its much lower price. Other than that, the keyboard's layout is completely the same, starting from the additional control keys, which are spread over the function keys at the top, few other dedicated hotkeys for the calculator, print screen and sleep, together with the dual markings for some selected keys covering both the Mac OS and Windows users. You can also notice that we have three dedicated switches labeled from 1 to 3 and those are for switching between different devices since this model also supports Bluetooth connection besides the regular one through their wireless unifying receiver. So you can for example in a second jump over to your Bluetooth connected Android device and start typing. With the MX keys, Logitech again used the scissor type of switches with rubber dome, onto which we have low profile, pretty distinctly concave keys that offer a similar typing experience seen on, for example, an above average laptop keyboard. Although I personally do not enjoy typing on this kind of keyboard, I couldn't say that I wasn't pleased with it, on the contrary. I love how the keys are pretty firm and direct despite not being mechanical ones, they do provide enough tactile feedback, they are not that mushy and they don't wobble at all. Behind the keycaps we have a pretty subtle white LED backlighting, which turns on when the integrated sensor picks up any movement around the keys and turns off within 3 seconds if there is no activity, keeping your battery life as long as possible. Being a wireless keyboard with illuminated keys, one would expect that the battery life is not that long, and you would be correct since it lasts anywhere from 5 to 10 days on a full charge and with full brightness, of course depending on how many hours you put in it daily, while you would probably get a better result if you were to lower it down, or you can completely turn it off, and in that case Logitech claims that it can last you up to 5 months on a single charge. Last piece of the puzzle for the MX keys is of course Logitech's options utility in which you can, besides checking your battery level, remap some of the top hotkeys to something else, the list here is really long, set up your application specific profiles, tamper with some of the more specific settings and check which devices have you paired with it and under what number. 
Although this is not a completely new product, so to speak, I do like that Logitech based this version out of an existing model, which is aimed towards specific niche of users, removed a feature or two and brought the price down by about $100, making this already great keyboard even more available to a wider range of users. I hope we will see it below the $80 mark eventually, at least during like a Black Friday or Cyber Monday deals. That's it for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content, that really helps a lot, and if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe, and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video, and until then, catch you later guys. After checking out Logitech's brand new M- Blah.